Okay, uh, Ben is going to begin. Uh, ben is going to lead the discussion. So Ben, please go ahead. Okay. Um. Okay. Hi, this is Ben. I'll lead this week's paper reading. Uh, the title of this paper is uh, "Intrusions Induce Global Warming Before Continent of Blood Basalt Volcanism." Um, Xiao Xuan Tian is the first author of this work. He got his bachelor degree at San Yasen University, got his master degree at the University of Memphis, and a PhD at Columbia University. Now he's working for Boston College as postdoc. Uh, his research has been focused on the solid earth process that are controlled by magnetism and tectonics, specifically from a geodynamic perspective. And uh, at the beginning, I'll introduce uh, a little about the LIP, Large Igneous Province. Uh, it's an uh, important phenomenon in Earth's process. The characteristics of the large igneous province include that uh, large igneous volumes and uh, interpreting the tectonic settings or geochemical aff affinities and the short duration. Uh, and LIP magma can release uh, a lot of carbon dioxide that are enough to warm uh, Earth's climate. Usually we acknowledge that the carbon dioxide erupt at the same time with the magma eruption, if you can image uh, the, how the volcanoes work. Uh, but the new age data for both Deacon trips and the Columbia River Basalt group complicates the link between LIP and volcanism and uh, global warming. These two places are the re research uh, location in this work. And, uh, uh, for the Deakin trips, one of the largest uh, LIP new data suggests that more than 70% of the fluid basalt were in place uh, about 300,000 years after the onset of an average uh, 2 degrees C global warming. And uh, the red and the brown, uh, red and brown area here uh, represent the eruption of the Deakin trap. And the black curve is the ocean oxygen or the temperature difference with the today. So we can see there is a lag between the global warming and the LIP eruption. Uh, the lag is between the, these two blind, uh, blue lines and it is about 300,000 years. And also the recent high present age data indicate that 90% 90 uh, 90 of the Columbia River basalt group uh, erupted about 300,000 uh, 300, years after the onset of the Miocene climate optimally. So the, 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 the uh, paleoclimate index data used in this paper are coming from this work, such as the oxygen uh, isotope and the mean temperature difference with today. Generally, the ocean our oxygen isotope are lighter, the global temperature are higher. And these two uh, vertical red lines are here, are the, this, are the two uh, global evidence discussed in today's paper. So the geo geophysical data in previous work indicate that about 10 times more magma is intrude in as is extrude. Uh, and geochemical data uh, studies also indicate that uh, about 8% of the total magma volumes were intruded within the crust during the, the Columbia River basalt group in placement. And the crystallization released near all the carbon dioxide dissolved in basaltic magma. Then the carbon dioxide could transfer, uh, traverse the overlying crust and add to the atmosphere through fractures faults and uh, hydrothermal vents. Besides, the intrusion and the solidification of the basaltic LIP magma would release far more carbon dioxide than the released by extrusion. So the pattern of global warming preceding the LIP eruption can be explained because the intrusion preceded the, 
the intrusion preceded the extrusion. And uh, before discussing more about the problem, we have to be clear about how the extrusion works. If the if the extrusion takes place on the Earth's surface, the pressure the pressure in magma reserves must be higher than the pressure at the phase of a column of magma from the surface to the reservoir. And there are two conditions to make the magma reservoirs can be overpressured relative to the lithostatic pressure. The first is the magma reservoir uh, reservoirs are small. The second is the reservoirs are surrounded by a high viscosity crust, but most of the LIP have large magma reservoirs. So the large fluid basalt extrusions may only happen if they meet the second conditions. The second condition, which is when the average overburden density is greater than the magma density. And here is the average seismic uh, velocity with depth in continental crust. The y-axis is the depth, and the axis axis here uh, on the top is the uh, seismic velocity. Uh, the dashed line is the average continental P wave velocity. The solid line uh, shows the density assumed in the model, which they found in uh, previous work. Therefore, the velocity and the density have a linear relationship, relationship and they transfer the seismic velocity into the density. And they also assume a typical basaltic magma density of 2800 uh, 20, here. And uh, figure B the, it is uh, schematic. They want to say that the, the lethal static pressure would be enough uh, to drive eruption only if the magma is sourced from the field that is deeper than 20, 27 kilometers. For the field at shorter uh, dips like a, a 15 kilometer depth, the magma will now reach the surface. And uh, uh, the figure C and the D are the profiles of the cross under part of the decay trap. And the purple curve shows the uh, lethal, uh, lethal static pressure for the LIP intrude crustal density. Uh, we can find it is denser, it is denser than the average middle and upper crust in this figure C. And this blue circle I draw here shows that the dense spot crust at the depth of 15 kilometers has more than enough pressure to supply eruptions. So under this density structure, magma is eruptible from much shallower fields at a depth of 15 kilometers. And the denser crust beneath, uh, beneath the LIPs is probably due to the basaltic uh, crustal intrusion. For this, they gave a further explanation that crustal densification due to lots of magma intrusions and solidification is necessary for the uh, extrusion of continental fluid basalt. And, uh, then they are trying to build a reasonable model. This model can pr produce a major phase of extrusion starting a few hundred years, few thousand years, a few hundred thousand years after the onset of global warming, which is caused by the carbon dioxide gas from preceding crustal magma intrusion. The system of crustal magma seal intrusion develops in uh, this four stages. Uh, the magma doesn't until doesn't erupt until the fourth stages, um, and uh, the model parameters include magma flux through time and radius radii of the magma seals, density structure of the crust, and uh, efficiency of hydrothermal heat transport. The key output is the a pre predict time lag between the onset of a significant global warming uh, signal related to the carbon dioxide and the onset of the main phase of fluid, fluid basal extrusion. And in the first stage, uh, the primitive melt um, produced the CO1. Uh, and at this moment, the magma temperature is too low to heat the magma liquids and uh, the magma and the steel will cool down soon. And um, 
uh, the and uh, a series of seals are in place upwards from the C1 to C2 as the melt flux increases. And a lot of the heat is added to the crust at the depth where the seals intrude and it heats the magma uh, magma liquids. The, the liquid magma is right. There is no eruption, and in the and in the stage three, uh, in stage three, the magma flux begin to decrease. Still, intrusions cannot exist in at the shallower depth, uh, where the heat is lost too fast to the surface. And the green line, is, the green line here still stays uh, left than the red line. That means the present is not enough and the density, the crust density is still lower than the magma density. And uh, so uh, the so there's uh, now there are now eruptions. And uh, in the stage four, the CO2 one, two, three has been cooled down and therefore the crust density has been increased and the crust has been warmed by them. So the CO4 have enough temperature and the overburden density. Uh, thus, it uh, erupts now, which is uh, 500,000 years from, from the start of intrusion. Uh, this figure are the results from one model predicting a global warming for Deccan trips uh, LIP. Uh, in figure A, the left y-axis is the intrusion depth, which is which corresponding with the green curve. The axis is the x axis is the age, and the red axis is the seal thickening rate, which is the black curve. Um, the red dot here is the onset of main phase eruption. The seal thickening the seal thickening rate represents the intensity of intrusion. The highest value is the main intrusion phase. Um, the way can, way, and the way to find that the onset of main, main phase eruption not happened when the, the, when the, when the intrusion phase and we could, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, the uh, main, main phase eruption not happened when the intrusion depth is the largest, uh, which confirmed their theory. Uh, in figure B, the left, the left y-axis is the atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide concentration. The time of the carbon dioxide concentration reach the top is between the intrusion and the eruption. And it's, it's perfect fit their theory. So then they use their model coupled with a, with a, um, with a model called LOSCAR which is the climate model to indicate that the, the intrusive carbon dioxide initiated about two degrees C. Uh, yeah, this is two, about two, grade, two degrees C of global warming, uh, 300,000 years before the main, state, main phase of LIP volcanism. And uh, same with the decantrips, decantrips LIP, the condition of Columbia River uh, but that group is also fit by this model, uh, this model they built. And um, and uh, uh, and uh, that's all for this paper. And uh, there are some my uh, comments in, for this work. Uh, it is that the this paper is good at explaining the lag between the global warming and the LIP extrusion. And usually the climate evidence is too short compared with the geochemical process. So it's hard to link them well. Um, but the problem I think is, there is a sentence in the end of this paper that said early groups argue that this is, a, a, this is, a, this is a, which represents the LIP eruptions. Uh, uh, like uh, earlier groups argue that the, uh, LIP eruptions is accomplished by decreasing the magma density when you dissolve the 
of a lot of volatiles are retained in, in the magma, where as we assume it occurs by increasing the crustal density via intrusions. Uh, it makes me wonder if the carbon dioxide su successfully erupted or not. Well, since it can be retained in the magma, right? Uh, the whole paper doesn't now uh, does not discuss a lot about how the carbon dioxide behaves. Like we know the fact that the magma intrusion produces a lot of carbon dioxide, and the, the temperature of the global surface has increased. But the link or the proof between these two facts is not enough in this paper. And uh, well, that that uh, is only my opinion. So, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you, Brent, for the discussion. Uh, any questions or comments from our participants today? We'd like to discuss. Hey everyone. Hey Ben, thanks for giving the summary. I have a, just a general question for everyone here, the geochemist. How good, when they say high resolution geochronology, how, uh, how much uh, confidence do you usually place in the resolution there? What's the actual resolution when they say high resolution? What's the temporal resolution? Um, oh, well, hey, that's this a good question. Um... I think they just mentioned that the this is a high resolution and it refers some paper, but the the basic method is to use the uranium plum, plumbum uh, data method and the argon argon. This this show show the um the method, but the, and the reference some paper. So I'm not sure the exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, the, yeah, it, exactly the data. Okay. okay, so the red line there is the geochronology data? Yes. yes. And where's the black line coming from? The yeah, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the black line comes from this work in the, I, I think, yeah, I, yeah, I, I read about this paper, and uh, they I think they just used the the oxygen isotope and other um, uh, and other data to. Uh, I also, I think that it's also in a model, and the model output the temperature. The input data are maybe include the oxygen isotopes or and other uh, like uh, some data. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because yeah, that uh, bottom because, black line looks very modeled to me, very smooth. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 right. Yeah, so, 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 uh, Brian, so for stable isotopes like carbon and uh, oxygen here, they have been used. Um, mm -hmm. Stable isotope fractionation uh, is a function of the temperature. So, so that's how people calculate calc uh, to trans uh, convert the uh, isotopic values. Uh, of the different, uh, I don't know, maybe sediments as well as some uh, uh, igneous samples, and then you, you convert that into temperature. And then for the age, that's mainly from the radio, uh, radiogenic isotopes, and that produce this uh, parent-daughter isotopes relationship. And for uranium lead, I think it's uh, relatively well. Uh, one of the uh, best isotopic system that for geologists to know. So I think people mm -hmm. have been pushed for very high uh, time resolution for that, um, but I'm not here. I'm not sure that how. Uh, I I I don't think that it's just uh, for one case um, that they are sure that the uh, global warming is what they are trying to propose here. Uh, it, it is uh, before they uh, uh, different eruptions. Uh, I think what they are trying to put here is that they have a multiple of a sample that are being analyzed and then people do the statistics and then you could see a certain distribution of the eruption event. Uh, and then they're trying to compare two populations of the ages um, from, uh, uh, one is from um, the slide six and another is slide five. And they're trying to do that uh, to say that there is a, let's say, a very high probability that 
global warming occurs before the uh, large igneous provinces eruption uh, in terms of age. So that, that's what I get from here. Right. Yeah, if you were to look at just the black line and the red lines, um, you even taking into account that 68% credibility interval, it looks like a super strong signal. But yeah, if it's if there's over smoothing going on, then it all depends. Like if there's some kind of temporal smoothing of the one of those data sets, like what's the window size of the smoothing compared to the the lag. That they're looking at and um, these plots look very convincing to me i'm just curious what's usually what's the temporal resolution compared to the lag it seems like it's probably much smaller than the lag that they're observing and modeling here yeah yes so so normally for uh geochemical analysis uh if you could go by one percent in terms of your uh your, uh, your, your age resolution, I think, is pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. It used to be very, very challenging. I think now it's uh, possible. So uh, so even by that standard, it's uh, pretty good here. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 1% is a benchmark that you could check. Uh, for, for earlier samples, they normally have worse resolution to 1%, but in recent... Uh, uh, in the 21st century that people have done better. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, okay, I, I think then as you mentioned earlier on uh, from your perspective that having a, um, for the samples that, uh, for the magmas uh, uh, that release their carbon, uh, I said, doesn't necessarily like say, oh, what's that connection with the surface temperature? Uh, is that what's your uh, previous comment about that you don't think, like say, there you think there is this possibility where uh, there is a mechanism that is still unknown that uh, if an intruded mag a magma released all its uh, carbon dioxide, uh, but this magma has never got extruded. So you're not sure that how those uh, carbon dioxide are coming to the surface. And then yeah. global warming. Yeah, yeah, I think they argued some uh, thought that are um uh, are got by the earlier groups. I mean, uh, so since there are there is possible that the maybe the carbon dioxide are retained are retained in the magma, so maybe the carbon dioxide are not going to the surface. I think they didn't prove that. Uh, the carbon dioxide must must come to the surface. I mean, okay, okay, I, 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 I see your argument here. So, yeah, I think it's an interesting point. Uh, as far as I could tell, that if this uh, uh, decompression process occurs, that this magma travels from somewhere much deeper to the shallow part, uh, it's very likely that they could reach a carbon, uh, carbon dioxide saturation. Uh, because uh, carbon dioxide uh, solubility is um, uh, negatively correlated with the pressure. So once they go uh, uh, lower, uh, let's say, uh, let me see, the uh, solubility uh, uh, is, is positively correlated with the pressure, sorry. So the lower pressure it is, the magmas try to contain much less carbon and then uh, the extra carbon or the carbon that becomes saturated, then they become uh, released. So, so not fundamentally different than when you open a soda, right? So, so, yeah. so you open that, they de depressurize it, and uh, then the solubility of carbon dioxide decreases uh, in the liquid, and then the rest of the carbon dioxide are going to be released as gas phase. Um, but here, I think there's the, there's many value difference than how much they have. Um, yeah. I, I didn't see. Yeah, I agree with you. The news paper they didn't specifically uh, trying to uh, quantify this part. I say how much ma uh, how much carbon that is still being uh, reserved in this uh, magmas, um, intruded magmas, um, yeah. and how much of them that get released. So so it's definitely not zero. 
but it should have a certain number. I, I don't know how do you may do that. I think you might ask about the speaker on Wednesday. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, 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 also, that's how much carbon did the, the samples of the brain uh, from the source to the fundamental source to the intruder part. Uh, they're trying to plot here that density of a magma um, or, uh, first. So for, for, for the figures on the left or on the west direction for those two figures. So as we go to deeper depth, of course, even with the same composition, the liquidus and the solidus curve are going to change accordingly. So it's a yeah. lower and, and shallower pressure and the higher and higher pressure, especially they go to 40. Um, Kilometer and then more than one GP. I, I think there is a quite a strong uh, uh, pressure effect, especially from shallow to much deeper, to to this deep. Um, so we should be able to see two curves. It looks like that. But the one thing that is inevitable is that what type of magma they are trying to pull here. Uh, so it may be, but uh, here, of course, as uh, I I don't know that how. Uh, okay, they 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 doesn't consider the. Uh, Melt crystal fractionation, of course, uh, which is something that petrology like us are always think about. So, so, so for this part, of course, um, the depth, uh, melting temperature relationship is uncertain. Uh, is not exactly what they're showing here, and also the uh, depth and density relationship. I don't think they uh, they're trying to set they they're trying to make the story relatively simple because otherwise yeah. they are going to model their models that are more complicated. But it is true that with increase of, of depth, then you're going to have the uh, high temperature melt magma, but also it will correspond to higher density uh, by itself, even with exactly the same composition. So so I, I hope that they, they put something slightly different than that, uh, that looks more realistic. So, so, so that's something that I see from my end. Uh, but, uh, yeah. yeah, but overall, I think it's a pretty interesting proposal they're trying to propose, right? So yeah, yeah, uh, to make the cross dense. So so that's another thing that I I think that is interesting. So the basically their one implication they have is that if their stories are right, and then all the cross density are significantly increased before the eruption of those large significant provinces. So basically, this large even the process are going to significantly change the composition of the crusts, or most of the continental crusts actually. So, so actually then 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 it sounds to me that is a and this underplating or whatever process mm -hmm. they're trying to put here uh, will significantly change the crust composition. Because if not significant yeah. then they, they have no way of trying to uh, modify the density of the crust so large uh, that could finally, uh, that's a result in the large snake and provinces eruption. Hmm. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe turned out. Do you think so? Do you think that after all the large snake and province events that we should be able to see a more mafic crust composition? Like significantly more mafic. Not just the erupted part, according to this paper, they're trying to predict that the crust, as it beneath the large area of the province, will become much denser. Mm -hmm. Are they proposing this mechanism for 
all large igneous provinces? Like, do they expect yes. this to happen? Okay. Yeah. I think and so. What can to... oh. Oh. You, you mentioned uh, some uh, some have large carbon reserves and some don't. What controls that? Uh, uh, some have a large, uh, let's say, higher carbon in the source. Or do you mean carbon yeah. cell? Yeah, carbon carbon source. Carbon source. Oh, that's a bit, uh, in the mantle, then it mainly depends on the uh, recycled components. So is that proximity to a subduction zone? Um, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, so, no, uh, so for the uh, depleted mantle, like the mantle source beneath the more uh, mid, 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 mid ocean ridge, mid ridge ocean basalt, then the carbon content as is about 10, 20 ppm. And then you look at the oceanic island basalt, then it's uh, one order of magnitude higher. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, mm. so normally us, there are subladic components involved, so then the carbon concentration dramatically increases. Right, right. So what, uh, what, what causes the ending of this whole cycle? Uh, basically, like the the source that that the intrusion is like the magma source of the intrusion is depleted or or what 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 happens what causes the end of it? Uh, there 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 are different parts. So so normally they people think there is a plume uh, here that drives the temperature slightly much higher, and the best there are volatiles involved that lower the melting temperature of the uh, mantle rocks here and then i think there's another important part is that how much of the mass uh volume of the mass that comes with the plume because in the end then when this plume of the mass flow all went up i think that's already the end of it because then you won't have enough heat source to melt the mantle then that ceased so uh so to me that for large even provinces that's and I say one important factor that uh, a key one um, to controlling the beginning and end of it is basically still temperature. So we have to have the plumes have that. Although nowadays people are trying to link it with the lower mantle, uh, the large lower, the LCVPs, for example. But mm -hmm. you know, we're not sure about that. But I think what mm, it requires to have large unit provinces is that it must have some temperature anomaly that's large enough. And then only at the some parts that uh, uh, to, to, to go in above the melting temperature of the mantle rocks. Uh, um, uh, and, and of course, in this paper, they say, okay, uh, you know, the melt that goes up well and have to be uh, uh, overcome the uh, buoyancy of the crust, uh, or whether they're trying to modify the crust density to make the magma flows uh, to, to, to erupt easier. Uh, uh, I think I think that's what they're trying to propose. Um, but but I think so that, but the, I, yeah yeah. So yeah. the density but, changes. Does that cause the that buoyancy threshold to change, and then that could potentially cause the the end of it? I, yeah, uh, I, I think that's the story uh, message they are trying to convey. So they they are trying to make the crust denser, and of course the the magma. Uh, let's say even still pretty dense, uh, it's easier to be buoyant to to go up. But I think mm. this still, uh, let's say, uh, as, as, as you were asked earlier, uh, let's say, how does it going to cease? I think at the end of it, this still needs to have lower temperature, uh, or lower uh, heat flux end of this. Because if the heat store still has a, a lot of heat to passing through, then we should still have the make your magnets constantly coming up. But I didn't because right. each event, like I say, is pretty large, but yeah. But, but I yeah, think it seems like each event is large and, and it basically is within a relatively narrow time window. Yes, that's what surprised the people before for a large igneous province. Yeah. And people are trying to link that this a very abrupt event to the different massive extinctions. So okay, right, right, uh, yeah. yeah. So 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 people are trying to do that, 
And people propose different things. For example, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, people also trying to say that, uh, for example, in Deccan tribe, they're trying to say that in the mental sources, they have a lot of sulfur. So once they erupt, uh, they have some sulfur. And that's it. Those sulfur that dissolve in, in the magmas are being dissolved at the surface and they increase, significantly increase the uh, sulfur concentration in the atmosphere and drops uh, and introduce acid to the rain and then later on with a massive extinction. Some people propose that uh, with different ideas uh, to have those dramatic uh, effect on the Earth's surface. So, so I, I think this paper that didn't go in the other way, but they're trying to basically look at the more detail of how this uh, large ignis of provinces could happen. And uh, I think they are trying to give another explanation to uh, facilitate the large ignis province. The meanwhile, tr trying to say that uh, it's possible that a lot of intruded uh, mafic rock, uh, magmas uh, intruded the crust just way before, uh, not way before, I mean, in geological time, it's a very short time. It's, uh, it's just before the uh, final eruption. Uh, but I think it also brings an interesting point is that probably trend out could pay more attention is that how in this case will result in the intrusive and the extrusive uh, rock volume because uh, it is an interesting question. I mean, for all the magmas uh, throughout the Earth uh, history, the some of the magmas erupted, the some did not, so they become extrusive and intrusive. But I think this case is uh, some of the more extreme examples. That people thought it was uh, extrusive, but this authors doesn't think so. They think if their mechanism is right, then they are suggesting that significantly way more intrusive uh, volumes existed than what has been finally uh, extruded. So, so that's I, I think that's the same thing as what I was asking earlier. That how much will that change the cross composition? It should be huge. Mm -hmm. uh, um, by the volume. Uh, okay, then 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 Trina was asking another question uh, in the chat that said the carbon is stored at the lower and the crust middle crust. Uh, I don't think so, uh, because uh, at the beginning, yes. So those magmas that carry the carbon dioxide, they uh, reach this neutral buoyancy at the lower crust. Uh, the lower crust has a really high density, and then this mafic mag mag magmas uh, containing volatiles probably they could reach similar like 2.8 uh, uh, in terms of density. But it is, needs to be cooled down because this magmas, if they are really talking about the basaltic magmas, then this temperature uh, under the underplating should be as high as like 1200 degrees C or even higher. So in the end, this you need to cool down to somewhere uh, maybe 800 degree uh, C, 700 degrees or something like that. So, so by doing that, Inevitably, they have to uh, depress, further depress the carbon uh, dioxide uh, solubility, and then a lot of carbon have to be released. Either uh, they, they won't uh, release a free gas species since the pressure is still relatively high. So normally, at some uh, fluids, for example, uh, uh, things possible, then going through different features or uh, tectonic weak points uh, parts, then no, those uh, carbon carbon related fluids will be released because they have a much lower density. So, so I, so I don't think that it can be kept very long for the uh, carbon in the magmas in the uh, lower lower crust. I don't think that will hold very long because it needs to be cooled, especially their mafic magmas. Okay, any other comments or ideas? Uh, and I prepare a slide for the, for explaining the oxygen acid, how the oxygen acid help reflect the climate if you are interested. Uh, so generally the, the uh, oxygen isotope uh, uh, when the water uh, came into the atmosphere, the light, uh, oxygen and go into the cloud and uh, 
get get a change and get get to the rain and uh, fall down the con continental. So the heavy oxygen uh, is stay in the sea. And uh, if, if the climate is normal, then the, the, the rain, the water and rain will come back to the, the, uh, the ocean that makes the oxygen is not, not that heavy and get lighter. So if there is some uh, cold climate, then there will be more ice sheet on the continent, then the ash sheet will stay in the continent. Then uh, that means the light oxygen stay in the uh, stay in the continent. Then the uh, ocean oxygen will get heavier and heavier. So if the oxygen is heavier, that means the the climate uh, the global climate is um, colder. Yeah, and if it's hotter than the the, the ocean oxygen will get uh, lighter. So that's the, 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 the theory of this um, oxygen, climate, oxygen temperature map. Uh, how does it make it? Yes, yeah, pretty good. Uh, uh, because uh, dark shark uh, group, they're going to get a tag. Uh, I think probably the very last duck. Uh, of the webinar series this year uh, at the Geo Data webinar. So they're going to talk about our Arcane Hot Ocean, a hot or Arcane Ocean. So basically they are using oxygen aging isotopes. So so basically the idea is similar. Yeah, is this sim is this idea. So the harder it is, then we're going to see lower uh, delta 18. Yeah. As a less delta 18. To be stayed in the ocean, right? So more than anything, we are going to the atmosphere. So we are expected to see low uh, delta eighteen oxygen values from Zach Shark Group's work published geology. We will read about that. Okay. Okay. I think it's pretty good. Uh, let's let's see how the speaker. It's going to explain us more details on Wednesday. And yeah, let's think about it. Maybe we'll have some more interesting questions jump up now before the talk or during the talk. Okay, uh, let's all open our videos to show our appreciation for Ben to leading the discussion. And then we could end our uh, discussion today. Hi, guys.